Hi, this is James with Hardy North America, and today we're going to show you how to rebuild the valve seats inside your constant pressure valve. Just as a reminder, anytime you're dealing with any spray components that have had any kind of chemical run through, you want to be sure to wear proper protective gear. In this case, we have a face shield, protective gloves, and a protective suit with long sleeves. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we're using new components, so I will not be wearing any of these today. What you'll need to complete your task today are a pair of pliers, an O-ring pick, an 8mm wrench, a T20 Torx driver, a kind of non-petroleum based lubricant, in this case we're using vegetable oil, and then finally a Hardy repair kit number 755754. This kit will repair one boom valve with a double bypass. The first step is going to be remove the valve stems from the sprayer. To do that, we're going to pull these U-pins here all the way across the valve stem. Then, we'll separate the lower housing from the valves. Your next step is going to be disassemble the valves into individual sections. To do that, we'll pull these two pins here and here, allowing us to separate all the valves. Next, we're going to be removing four torque screws using our driver. Next, we're going to remove this stud bolt on the bottom using our 8mm wrench. Once you give it a few turns, if you compress the spring here, it'll allow you to screw it off by hand. Set that aside, we'll come back to that later. Next, we'll remove this collar, and then we'll pull the U-pin right here. Pull off the liquid housing. We'll set that aside as well. Our next step will be to remove this valve seat, this washer, this spring, and this washer. Pull all that off. We're going to take this valve seat off of our washer and we're going to discard the valve seat. The spring and these two washers we will save for later. Next, we'll take our pliers remove this crescent clip from the stem and we'll discard that as well as our kit will have a new one. And we'll separate our stem from our liquid housing and this gets the first set of o-rings that we need to replace. Inside of our kit we're going to find six of these 21 millimeter o-rings, three of these 5 millimeter o-rings, two of these 29 millimeter o-rings, one of the 22 millimeter, one of the 15 millimeter, crescent ring, a support ring for our O-ring, a guide for an O-ring, a white valve seat, and a green valve seat. The first two O-rings we're going to be replacing, as we can see right here, uh, are already in the kit. They are very important. These are the O-rings that keep the water out of the motor housing. It's very important that we go down this far and replace those. Now moving back to our lower housing, we're going to use our O-ring pick to remove this o-ring. We're going to replace it with one of the 21 millimeter o-rings inside the kit. Before we do that, we want to make sure that we lubricate this o-ring so we don't have any issues when we reinstall it. Next, we're going to rebuild this lower housing. Each kit will 
come with an O-ring for one side of this coupler. So again, we're going to want to brush that with our oil to ensure a good seat. Push those back into place. Remove this O-ring. smaller ring down here, we'll replace it, 21, and using our lubrication to make sure we do not damage Next, we're going to rebuild our lower valve assembly. We're going to begin by taking off this washer, taking off this black assembly and getting rid of it, removing that washer, that spring, and then we're going to push our valve seat off of our bolt, we're going to pull off the washer, and get rid of the white valve seat. Replace it with one of the kit, putting it back together in the reverse order. Slide that onto our bolt, our spring, and our washer. And we'll grab these four pieces out of the kit. The small 5mm O ring in the center. This O ring around there. And we'll set all that inside of this guide. Slide that, the O ring in the up position top of our bolt, and finally finish with our washer on top. Now we'll begin reassembling our valve. We'll grab our valve stem, we'll push it inside of our lower housing. The green alignment indicator must line up with the slot inside the lower housing. We'll then take our crescent clip, push it onto the rod, washer, our spring, put this washer around the green valve seat and we'll press that on. We'll make sure that the green valve seat does seat correctly inside of the spring. There should be no gap between the spring, the washer, and the seat here. Next, we'll take our lower housing, press it on as well, grab our U-pin, back into place. Make sure we get it in all the way so that we clear that slot. Reinstall our collar and finally our lower, lower valve seat. If we push on this spring it allows us to get this started. And we can screw it most of the way by hand. Finally finishing with our wrench. just need this to be tight, it'll kind of stop us, and then we just want to do a little bit more. So that's re reassembled. Next, we're going to reinstall our valve stem onto our motor housing. Make sure the, the green indicator is on the same side as the motor dial. Next, we're going to bring our boom valves back together. Now before we put the valves back together, we have a few O-rings in here that we're going to have to replace. So we'll begin pulling all these U-pins. Then we'll take our 13 millimeter wrench. We're going to 
gonna unthread this rod. them with ones from the kit. Making sure to protect our O-rings by lubricating them before reinstalling them. Pull this off. Final two pieces of the kit. Once we've replaced all the O-rings across this valve body, we'll put it back together. Final step will be reassemble our valves back on to the lower houses. Line those up, press them in. Take our U pins. So that wraps up our how-to video on how to rebuild your constant pressure boom valves on your Hardy sprayer. Be sure to follow us on social media for more instructional videos from the Hardy Academy. Thanks for watching.